So what's going on? Kyle coming at you for another video. I've been kind of thinking about how I can grow my channel here. Just looking at like a couple of my other videos. Maybe I'm just a little too dry. I, mean, I get plenty of views on some of these. I only got like 56 subscribers and I thank every one of the 56 of you. So I'm gonna try a little bit different type of video today to see how that goes. Right now, this is just gonna be kind of a simple video, just a, a little life hack if you tow a lot of trailers. Because you see, I've got this problem, right? Let me show you what's going on. So if we come back and look at my hitch, um, if you look at it here, this thing doesn't fit that tight, right? So, I mean, that's a lot of play. And, geez, I'd say this thing's got a solid eighth of an inch or so all around it, which is probably pretty nice uh, if you go, you know, if you want to make it easy to take in and out. But the problem is, is when you have a trailer that doesn't have a ton of tongue weight on it, uh, like that trailer, when it's empty, it do definitely doesn't have its 10% tongue weight. Uh, that thing just rattles all over the place and shakes the whole truck going down the road. That trailer, being just a little homemade unit, just, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't pull super nice at right off the bat. And then to add all that play in the hitch, I don't think helps me at all. So I'm gonna try and look into finding a way to tighten up that hitch somehow. Also, I guess this is a good time to mention that I uh, went out and replaced the car dolly that you might have seen in my previous videos uh, with this full on trailer. It's only 12 feet long, but it's rated to 6,500 pounds which is good enough to haul cars because I'm pretty sure that even my truck doesn't even weigh 6,500 pounds. This trailer is heavy, but it's not, I don't think it's that heavy. I mean, I can pick up either end of it. So, I mean, as you can see, pick up the back pretty easy, axle and all, and pick up the front pretty much the same. Um, when I got this, I actually made some videos on this thing that I haven't put out yet, but if you guys are actually interested in wiring up a trailer or anything like that, I'm still still a work in progress. I've got it to the point where I can drive it around safely in the daytime and I've hauled two cars with it so far, but all I've really done is added the two lights on the back and the plate light and all that. I still got to wire up my side lights, um, which is not really anything, one wire you know one little running light with wire to those and uh i still gotta wire up the brakes and the thing holding me up on wiring up the brakes because that wiring is pretty simple is i just can't get the parts for it um because <clears throat> these things are dayton axles uh so trying to get parts for these is not necessarily the easiest thing and had i known how difficult it would be i would not have put these brand new tires on it because these tires only fit on these uh, Dayton wheels for these axles. Um, so yeah, uh, if anybody has any info on trying to find uh, parts for these Dayton axles, um, specifically uh, brake kit, uh, please put it down in the comments. I've looked at a few places like Easy Trailer and Redneck Trailer Parts and all that, and went to Napa. I brought the guys in Napa a picture of uh, what these brakes look like because I took the whole hub apart and everything just to have a look and see what I needed. And honestly, the shoes and the hardware don't look bad when you take it apart, but uh, the magnet, and I think I have a video of it, the magnet part just swings in the breeze and when you move it back and forth, it doesn't push out the brakes at all. So I haven't bothered to wire them up because ultimately i was hauling the car dolly which you know the the cars don't weigh more on the dolly than they do on the trailer i mean there's still the same amount of mass going down the road and that dolly never had brakes and the truck still stopped fine and i've hauled two cars one jeep grand cherokee and then this cavalier on this trailer and uh haven't had any trouble stopping it but i would like to have brakes because uh you know it's just a just safer and if I ever do haul heavier stuff and get closer to the max of this trailer, like haul like a skid steer or something like that, I'll want the brakes. Plus, it's uh, 
I think it's actually required for the inspection. I gotta figure that out and get this thing inspected. I've just used it a couple times, but these things are a daily use item for me. You know, towing is a almost daily occurrence and I kind of regret getting rid of the car dolly to get this because if I still had the car dolly, at least, uh, you know, at least I wouldn't be held up with this thing. But um, I've had to do a lot of work to it. I've already put in a ton of money and I should have just bought a brand new one to be honest because figure the tires were like 400 bucks for all four of them. And then uh, wiring it up, believe it or not, cost me over $100 because the cable for it, this uh, seven wire cable that goes to the, to the here. And I kind of did go overkill. I could have done it cheaper and just used individual wires and you know, I would have been a lot cheaper off, but I wanted to do it right and get as close to a brand new unit as I can. Um, so I went out and bought this cable. That thing was like 65 bucks. Uh, I have it going to a junction box, also something I didn't really have to do, but I chose to do to make it a lot easier to diagnose issues in it. And, you know, <sighs> had to build ramps for it because the ramps that came on it were about three feet long and it was like driving up a wall to pull a car up onto them. Uh, so I built these ramps and that's like almost $200 in material right there if you include the welding wire. Um, and yeah, the welds look bad on it because I was I did this with a Harbor Freight welder and they, the Harbor Freight welder was able to weld this good enough that it holds up. I, like I said, I've used it with two different cars, but partway through the job, I ran out of uh, Lincoln wire. I used Lincoln flux core wire in it, which helps a lot, but I ran out and uh, the closest place to me to get welding wire is tractor supply, but they only sell two brands of wire there. They sell Hobart and they sell Forney and I was super tempted to go with the Forney stuff but I noticed that there was a, a whole hell of a lot less Hobart wire on the shelf so I figured maybe there was something to it and uh, so I bought the Hobart wire and that was a huge mistake because that wire jams up in that Harbor Freight welder like you wouldn't believe every literally every time I try to start making a bead it would just stick stick to the inside of the uh, gun and it made it impossible i mean i was basically sticking out the wire just enough to start a little, you know and do a little bit and then it would stick again and pretty much you can see the end of the deal this is what you get when you use uh that hobart wire in a harbor freight welder don't do it um probably works great in a hobart welder i don't know it's like almost like it was melting to the inside of the of the gun. I changed the tip and everything. I've been running Lincoln wire and that same welder for the last, I don't even know how long, probably two years at least and never had any trouble with the Lincoln wire doing that. But the Hobart wire, for some reason, the same exact thing, 3000th wire, just, it's like it gets hot and, and welds itself to the inside. You know, anytime I have to go somewhere and get anything like materials, supplies, food, anything i live in the middle of nowhere and it takes forever to get there and so i spend a lot of time in the car or my truck riding around by myself just thinking you get some like weird thoughts when you're driving for a long period of times do you think rocks are actually soft they just tense up when you touch them why don't people put mayonnaise on hot dogs it seems like a perfectly acceptable condiment to put with a hot dog. Comment down below if you like mayonnaise on your hot dogs. All right, chums. Let's have a look at the mess I made. So essentially what I've done is I went and I took and I drilled out a hole and I used a tap, which I don't know if you guys have ever used one of these, but essentially if you drill out a hole that's a little bit smaller than the tap and the bolt that you want to use, this will cut threads in it. So. You can just screw your bolt right into it. Um, it's a pretty good amount of meat in these things. So it's good and bad because on one hand, it gives you some uh, thickness to hold the threads of your bolt, but on the other hand, it's a bitch to, to drill. All right, so I went ahead and uh, stuck my receiver in. I haven't tightened up the bolt yet. Here you go, you can see that thing is still all over the place. Real quick, I just wanna see how effective this is going to be. Shoot. Give her a good crank. 
If I could go back in time, I might have chosen a little bit shorter of a bolt, or I could just shorten this one up. I mean, I don't have a shoulder on it, so. Look at that. So that fixed that wagon there. The only thing left uh, moving around on is this ball, but the ball's pretty tight. Uh, so, that should fix that. Please subscribe for more. If you guys got any suggestions, criticisms, just anything at all, leave it down in the comments. If you guys request a video, I will do my best to make that video that you request or answer any question uh, that I can. And thank you so much.